hop on. Hop right. on these. You can share it to RUTV too if you want. Yeah, sounds good. I am a lot. We are live. Ooh, livesies. Hi, livesies. <laughs> I'm trying to get it shared right now. Um, cool. So, how has your day been so far? Uh, a disaster. How about yours? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's unfortunate. I appreciate you taking the time to come hang out for a little while. Then, no, um, no, no, you're good. It's it's nice to have a little. Uh, what is that? Where you see like a mirage in a desert, and you're like, cool. There's peace. And then you're like oh, back <laughs> in the house. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. Um, Cool. So yeah, we'll give it a few minutes and kind of dig in um, to some video stuff. Sweet. So it's really weird when you're looking at like StreamYard and then also the video and like everything, it's like delayed. I have like high ADD, so I should really just leave the screen right here and not touch just it. Just the one, yeah, the one <laughs> yeah. screen to take attention to. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Um, cool. So I'm getting this pulled up sure. on my phone as well. Scroll along. You're, you're a one woman show. Yeah, there you go. Good deal. So, um, Cool. Well, I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, there's a few people hopping on now. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Katie Day. I'm a real estate agent here in Houston, joined by Colin today, uh, who is the small town agent, the one, one and only. Have, one, yeah. of, one of one of yeah. one of the uh, one and only. <laughs> um, so yeah, what um. What's been going on in Hanover? Ha nothing. Absolutely nothing has been going on in the Gettysburg, Hanover, Pennsylvania area because we are not allowed to do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're on utter you, lockdown. We cannot do anything in person. Uh, we can play golf, but we can't show houses. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense. That makes sense. So apparent, have apparently. golf courses been open the entire time or is that something that recently reopened or what's, what's the um, status there? Friday, I believe Friday they're reopening golf courses. Um, okay. and a few other like recreational activities. Um, but in terms of our state in Pennsylvania, we have some of the strictest codes, I guess would be the right way to put it right now. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Just trying to figure out what new normal looks like for real estate in Pennsylvania and trying to adjust and get everybody on the same page. It's delight. <laughs> so just out of curiosity with that, um, I, I would assume you guys probably had stuff under contract prior to, you know, coronavirus and all that. Like how was that impacted? Sure. Um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, in real estate, we're sprinting all the time. All we do is lots of little sprints each day and then we finish the night and we get a rest and we get a sprint again in the morning. Um, it's kind of like somebody came and said, hey, um, you have to walk instead of sprint right now. Um, I was talking to another agent friend of mine today that works this area pretty hard. Also, we both agreed we're probably doing about 25 percent of the business we work. Um, if at all possible, uh, because even like little things, we're not allowed to have photographers go to houses, take photos. We're not allowed to go set up virtual tours unless they're already done. Um, so, I mean, we've probably put three or four homes under contract in this, you know, 45 day period, whatever it shakes out to be now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's definitely different. Um, you know, COVID related layoffs too. That's been another mm -hmm. challenge. Uh, our, our state thankfully came out with a form almost immediately. I'll give them credit there. Uh, it's directly for COVID. And we, as soon as we got it within 24 hours, we had everybody sign it before they could even process what it was, which was really good and turned out. <laughs> it puts an automatic stop to the timeline uh, for 30 days if you choose to activate it. So we signed it. We had all parties sign it and we've just been holding it in our back pocket. Um, yeah. Really not generating a lot of new business it's it's really hard too to tell a seller that it's a good time to sell right now when people can't actually come see their home um and we're in a very uh, small market you know so mm -hmm. a lot of old time values a lot of like who's your mom who's your dad and you know what that means is you know the 20 buyers that i have behind me on the board only one only one is willing to do a site on scene offer and that's yeah. pretty pretty common so to tell a seller hey you're gonna get top dollar for your house right now I don't like to lie. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, I would agree with that. Um, no, that's, that's definitely tough. Um, we just got a question. How would you say you uh, continue to push content in a lockdown state? Well, it's, it's tough. Uh, hi, Rod. Yeah. Um, it's, it's tough because I am a very social person. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm the guy, I'm not doing well with all of this. <laughs> I'm not. Um, so it, it's hard to come up with content and want to actually take action and do something when you feel like your hands are tied. Um, so right now, the content that I am making generally not very real estate focused. Uh, it's generally just humor. It's generally just trying to make people laugh and staying in touch with people. Um, cause at least for me, I don't, I don't think it's, I think it'd be a little uncouth to try to get people to sell right now, at least in our current state in Pennsylvania. I'm not talking about Texas or anywhere else. Um, yeah. You're really just staying on people's radars and trying to stay funny. I'm trying to just be like, Hey, we're all in this together. Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's the messaging that I think is appropriate right now. I, I think it would mm -hmm. be super, super inappropriate to be like, you can get top dollar right now, but shit, people can't see your houses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Am I so allowed to the curse? I don't you, even know. <laughs> we'll keep it out in uh, post-production if that even okay. exists. I don't think it does, exactly. but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, maybe Facebook bleeps it out. That'd be great. Anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so... I had another question for you. Oh, as far as stuff that you guys put under contract, did you know? Are are you able to have inspectors go out or things like that, or or is anyone allowed to do anything, or is it just real estate agents, or what are the restrictions? So the the real restrictions right now, um, good, you know, inspectors, appraisers, all those people are not supposed to be doing in person work. Um, right. Appraisers are considered real estate persons in our state. So they are supposed to okay. follow the same guidelines. They're also part of our local association, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, the big restriction the governor put in place is that we are not to settle anything generated after 318 currently. Okay. Yeah. So even if I saw a house on 318, wrote an offer two or three days later, technically we can't settle it, which okay. is actually the case for one of our properties. Yeah. Um, so it, it's very odd. Uh, we've been fortunate enough that we got all of our inspections and appraisals in before the extra hard deadlines were, or the hard codes were put in place. Um, and the most recent one that we put under contract, we had seen like two months ago. And then uh, the buyer actually lost his job. So then the listing agent called me and said, hey, that person that put an offer in on this house, are they still interested? And they had already had inspections from a reputable company, already had appraisal. So we just slipped right in. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, really unfortunate for those folks. Uh, yeah. But, you know, good for mine. Um, not that that's the way you want to win, but. Well, but I mean, how, how rare is that to have like already seen it, know you liked it, lost out, and like, you know, obviously your search is on hold and then this all to kind of happen um, is definitely fortunate for your client, for sure. For them, yeah. Because <laughs> they're already going through a lot. They canceled a wedding. <laughs> oh, no. They canceled oh, a no. wedding and uh, their landlord sold their house. <laughs> oh, wow. They were a lot going room. on. That, that is a lot of moving parts. And um, I think the biggest thing about all of this, guys, is be a freaking human. Like, I think that's what a lot of people are missing on is just be human. We're all tired. We're all tired of being locked up. We're all tired of this lockdown. Um, but everybody's everybody's in the same freaking boat. And I think, I think that humanization of what is going on is the biggest part of the messaging you should have right now. Yeah. Um, one thing I also wanted to talk about was your... Um, I guess, previous content and kind of what went into that. Because one thing that I really always love about your property tours is that it's not just a property tour. Like there's always some sort of fun component to them. There it's, you know, people that you know, I guess, um, you know, in them, or if it's, you know, you guys, you and your team in them. Um, so I guess just kind of like, what's your guys' thought process behind, you know, the content that y'all put out as far as property videos and, and stuff like that? Sure. Um... It's very property to property what we come up with, um, and my partners and I we we do a nice job of, you know, respecting each other's thoughts of what a house should be and what it shouldn't be. Um, we have two styles of videos primarily that we do for listings. Um, that board right behind me, those are all ideas. Um, <laughs> that is how my brain works. I'll just write down the brain board. dump. Yeah. Yeah. The brain dump. I'm the shower guy. I'm like, Oh, I got to go write that down. So I run upstairs and I write it down. Um, for the house, it, a lot of times the idea has already existed and then I, the how, right house just comes along. Like if it's something that's really more in depth, um, like I've done dating house video, I've done like a, a baseball and chips video when it was opening day. And, you know, we ran through the story, we did all that stuff. Um, 
so we'll have really in-depth listing videos where it's just fun and playful. And we go from room to room doing a different thing. Like uh, that one where you see the little girl over the sink, that's my daughter, um, her and my partner and my fiance, Nicole. It was just kind of like a Hallmark video. We just put some yeah. nice Christmas music behind it and they just did classic like mother daughter things and walked around the house and you just followed them and their cute little story. Um, the other style of video I do is I call it my trunk videos, um, which I usually do with my partner, Jim, um, where we literally just set up a tripod outside of the trunk of my car. We stand in front of uh -huh. the house in the background and we just riff. We just go to town and riff <laughs> it. or whatever thing we think is funny that day or in that moment. And we just like to kill the joke. And so then yeah. we end up with a two to three minute video. Um, some of the other content you're scrolling on right now, like you'll see, you know, like fun things to do in Hanover. Um, mm -hmm. That one where your mouse is. We do a lot of local content. We try to stay engaged with our local community, try to do hopefully searchable things. We'll see. <laughs> Um, but it's well, you had like three thousand over three thousand views on that, so I would assume it was pretty uh, pretty popular with your local market. Yeah, and we don't, you know, we don't really boost videos. It's not really our thing. Yeah. We usually let things start to take their own traction and see where it goes. Um, but we definitely find that when you create local content, it, it does quite well. And that one specifically about our town of Hanover, which only has fifteen thousand residents. Um, so my viewership on local content isn't going to be amazing, but you know, it's easy to do the metrics when you're looking at the audience. Um, so there's that. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you, you definitely did. Because I think that um, one thing I really like about when videos have people in them or it has a storyline of some sort, like it makes me want to watch it a lot more than just like, hey, there's this house, four bedrooms, two baths, and it's super great, right? Um, so I like, I like your style and I like the one that I... I'm pointing at my screen like you can see what I'm pointing at. Um, the have the bestie one, this one cracked me up. That was a good one. Oh, that, that, that was fun. All, all Jim and I did that day was we were like, hey, let's go to Goodwill and spend 20 bucks and figure out how to have a best friend's night. That, that was <laughs> it. That was, that was the exact thing that I said to Jim. And then we made that right there on the spot. Um, yeah. and I find, you know, like a lot of times when you have less of a script, you have more watchable content. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I think there's beauty in some of kind of those organic moments where you make mistakes and you are human and you say things off the cup. I think that sometimes when we're overly scripted, we, we miss out on humanizing the process. You know, going back to what I was just saying is I think people like seeing that we're human. I, I, I genuinely do. And, and when it comes to real estate, we all take ourselves so seriously. Um, <laughs> So we try to we try to make ourselves as approachable as possible, and we do that with humor. Um, but we also too we we demonstrate to people that we throw down that we understand real estate. Um, it's just at the end of the day, guys, it's not about telling people how great you are. It's about allowing people to get to know you, because if they know you, they'll want to work. Yeah, with you, right? yeah, that's so, that's so true for sure. Um, what would be your piece of advice for someone outside of everything you've already said for someone that wants to start video and hasn't yet someone that just wants to start video uh <laughs> you're overthinking it, it. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's what it is you're overthinking it right now um my favorite thing that i say about these things is like how many real estate agents will put their face on a billboard or literally put it on a bench right like because the way we always hear the common things i don't like how i look on video i don't like how i sound like that's those are the two most common things we hear about video but yeah, we'll put up a billboard. We'll let literally somebody sit on us on a park bench, but we're afraid to talk on camera. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, like I have plenty of weight I could lose, but I'm going to meet these people in person. They're going to hear me. They're going to see me. They're going to see my figure. They're going to see me in all of my not smallness. And that's, you know, you're going to have that face to face reality. You, you may not like how you sound or how you look on camera, but that's the movement forward. And if it, COVID hasn't showed us anything, it's, it's a, a video is going to be extremely important here, especially in the next 12 months as we don't have a cure, right? It's going to take a while to get this crap. If you are worried about video, it's because you're overthinking it. You need to give yourself permission to fail. You also need to stop comparing yourself to other people. You have your own race to run. I, I bask in just being unperfect. That is my zone, right? My zone, yeah. my, my zone for my quality of video is not crispy clean. It's not beautiful, but it's about what I'm saying and it's about what I'm doing and it's about humor and it's about getting people to watch the whole video. You know, don't worry so much about your $5,000 camera. 
because if you're not putting out content, you're probably not going to end up using the camera that you end up purchasing. Pick up your phone, start talking to your phone, and just start putting out content. Because, yeah. you know, what I have is I have an 80% rule. If it's 80% together, then I can run it. It may not be perfect, but at the end of the day, I get to put out a new video next week. And at the end of the day, if my 80% is better than what somebody's not putting out, then why am I not doing it? Give, give yourself permission to suck a little bit. It's okay. You're not going to get better until you suck. Like <laughs> It's just a reality. Um, so how long have you been in real estate again? Sure. Uh, six years. I am six okay. years. It feels like forever, right? When would you say? It does. You... We're the only industry where five years is a veteran. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, so yeah. six years, you made it over the five-year mark. So congratulations there. When would you say you started implementing video in your business? Has it been the entire time? Has it been just the past month? Which I know it hasn't. But how, how long would you say video has been an integral part of your business? Uh, probably at the end of my second year. Um, so right after that point where you think you understand the paperwork, you think you're grounded, you think you have a business in front of you. And I was like, oh, what new thing do I add? Because everybody should do that thing. What are three things you're eliminating? What are three things you're adding at the end of the year? That's always an assessment you should do, right? <laughs> you always want to implement new things. And that's what we do yeah. you know, around November. That's where you make that list, guys. Um, but yeah, that's really what I started is right here, webcam. I just started recording a video where I'd talk about basic things like insurance tips. And I had my insurance agent on. We talked to a webcam. And I still had on my normal back then when I was wearing shirt and ties and all that stuff. <laughs> um, and that's the other thing. You know, the beauty about video is it, it allows people to see your personality. It allows people to see who you mm -hmm. are. If I showed up in a shirt and tie, people would be like, what the hell? Um, that's, not what they, that's not what I was showing them. So that's not what they're going to get. You get to set the tone, right? Um, you get to set the tone of who you are and what your brand is and what your image is when you have video because you're saying what you are versus people taking assumptions. The other part of it too is you're framing their expectations. The best part, the absolute best part is what, you know, Tim and I have dubbed self-filtering, right? People aren't going to call you if they're watching their content and they don't like it. The people that call you because of your content really like what you're doing. And those are the people that are going to be your cheerleaders. Those are the people who, when you sit down with them and go, cool, let's do this. Those are the people that are going to be the people you want to work with. So the nice part about putting yourself on video is you're avoiding those awful transactions where your personalities just don't align. And that's because they already stand, understand who you are. You know, like I try to be approachable, affable, likable. I try to be the guy that you could have a beer with because that's who I am. You know, that, that's Hopefully that's what I think of myself. Um, but that's that's what you need to project to make sure that you're having a business that is running with the clientele that you want to run with. Um, a lot of times less is more. So in this instance, in my business, where my business is now versus several years ago, I don't lose anymore. Like I, I, when I have a loss, it might be once or twice in a calendar year. And by that, I mean losing a disappointment or losing a buyer. I take it very personally, but I'm past those doing the 10 appointments only to get three listings. Yeah. Now I'm now I'm now I get nine listings out of 10 appointments. Right. So it's a good place to be. Start putting out content, start telling people who you are and your business is going to grow with consistency. Don't create video and expect something to happen tomorrow. Six months. <laughs> if six only, months. right? If only. Yeah. <laughs> It's a body of work, just like your career. You know, you gotta you gotta sell the houses to be able to have the resume. You gotta create the videos to have the resume and to back up who you are and what you are. But people are gonna appreciate that you're putting yourself out there, um, especially in, if you're in a market where there's not a lot of agents just being personal and putting out videos like that. You said you're a guy that you know people would like to have a beer with. What's your favorite beer? Oh my God! You want to make fun of me? You ready? Oh I'm geez. So, I'm so boring. I like just having the global trip. I don't get I don't get crazy. You can make fun of me. I like it because I like knowing that it is three point nine percent alcohol and that I know exactly what it's gonna do to me as I progress. Well it's gonna do nothing to you. I know, it's golf. <laughs> it's it's water. It's basically beer. water. It's basically water. Yeah. Um, it's what it's what athletes consider beer. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> 
Um, huh. Well, that's interesting. Is that a no? That's not in my culture. Sorry. Um, no, you're good. Hmm. You're good. It's a Pepsi. <laughs> basically, basically no, the same thing. You can make, you can make fun of me because I can. I can tell right now that you're like, oh, I have my gallon of whatever right here from X Y Z Brewer. But no, I am what I am, and that's that's part of the thing. Is like, I'm just a dad who likes to tell dad jokes who gets off on making other people laugh like embrace who you are don't lie to people because they're going to end up seeing who you are at the end of the day and that's it's the same thing you know it's it's like when we put filters on our photos of our houses why the why the hell are we doing the same things to ourselves right like don't misrepresent yeah. your product you are what you are so, oh that's that's good thank you i just came up with that don't misrepresent your product you are the product right um, we all ultimately the product Right, like people are choosing to take our service. We are essentially a product. So think about it like that. You know, don't don't sell a false bill of goods. What else you got, Katie? <laughs> I'm still I'm still stuck on the culture. I'm sorry. I uh, no, that's I had okay. Whole stuff, a bunch of stuff planned. It's now I just flew out of my head. You know, yeah. um, so. I'm trying to think back to the RETV happy hour and remembering what you were drinking if you were drinking then, and I don't so, remember. Same if it was, thing. It, it was an ultra. I swear, it okay. always is. I don't really do anything else unless I have to. Uh, like, you know, you're from this area. Yingling is what people love as a yeah. regular beer here. I don't. It makes me really red in the face. Um, it makes me weird. I don't do well with like a bunch of things <laughs> and stuff. Um, I so drink what I know. Interestingly enough, you can't get Yingling in Texas, so we only get it when we're on the East Coast. I'm aware. Yeah, you can pretty only, pretty much only get it from like Florida up. Um, and yeah. just the East Coast. So. Yeah. Um, so speaking of RETV, for those mm -hmm. that may be watching right now that aren't familiar with it, do you want to talk a little bit about the group? Sure. Um, so RETV is a place that Tim Macy and I created two years ago, almost now to the day. Um, and it's a place for lenders, agents, settlement officers, anybody in the real estate sector that wants to make content and get better with their content. It is a place you can come where we will not sell you anything. We will not allow anybody to sell you anything where you can ask your questions about how to get started or feedback on content you've created without judgment. Um, I mean, granted, you're asking for critique, so you might get a little judgment. <laughs> but nobody's going to mock you or tell you that you're sucking. Uh, you're going to get encouragement and you're going to get critique to get better. And it's really a peer-to-peer -peer network. There's no motive. There's no nothing aside from the industry getting better as a whole. And we'd love to have you there and to come ask your questions. One note, as you go check it out, make sure that you ask, answer the questions that, that are prompted when you go to join the group. Yes, please tell us what part of the industry you're in. A lot of times people neglect that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that'll speed up the process of you getting in the group. But I, I love it. That's how we met. Um, I love you know, being able to share videos, and people, you know, take this out, add more of this, you know, all the critiques and, and uh, advice are really helpful. So I like it a lot. Yeah, it, it's a really, you know, part of the reason that Tim and I founded it is because, you know, we were looking up in our areas and our markets. And we realized that there weren't a lot of people doing what we were doing. And we wanted to make sure that we were both doing it correctly. And we, unfortunately, or for better or worse, we had to go online to find that. We had to go online to find that, you know, we weren't crazy for doing walkthrough videos. Hmm. <laughs> no. <You> know, <laughs> crazy for making jokes and videos or yeah. crazy for doing something that was considered too progressive, right? Like a lot of times you have to find your people in other areas. This, this is what I'll tell you too. You know, if you guys take anything away from me today, if you're at a brokerage where you look up, and you're the smartest person in the room when it comes to whatever you're killing it at might be in the wrong spot. You know, one of the, one of the hard things that I had to do a few years ago was I realized that my business was going to be completely driven by social media and video. And I was in the wrong spot to do that. So find the people that can grow you, find the people that can nurture you. It, it doesn't matter what brokerage it is. Just find the right spot for you. Find the place where somebody knows more than you do. Don't get stuck in consistency. Don't get stuck in drinking McUltra over and over again. Get stuck in investing in yourself. Um, so that's that's a big part of the reason we created that group. Yeah. That sense. <laughs> it does. <laughs> cool. 
Um, well, I appreciate your time today. Is there anything else that you'd like to share um, as far as video goes, as far as, you know, imperfect action, getting content out there, stuff like that? Yeah. Um, keep moving the wheels, you know, and don't be afraid to delete something too. And all the times I will create a meme that I think is hilarious. And I'm like, oh, that is not funny. Delete it. Nobody cares. Nobody, you know, like realize that your Facebook timeline is your resume. You know, people aren't click, clicking in on LinkedIn to look at how many houses you sold when it comes to hiring you. They're, they're looking at your profile and they're saying, who is this person? Is this somebody I would want in my house? Is this somebody I'd want to represent me? So make sure you are proud of what you're saying. Make sure you're proud of what you're doing. Make sure it's laughable. Make sure it's whatever it is. Make sure it's something you can stand behind. You know, don't look lame when you can control what your narrative is. And when it comes to what we are dealing with, with COVID, the people who are going to win right now are the people who can create their messaging, can have a plan that's ready to go, how to do this safely, how to do it a better way. Those people are going to have a big edge, and especially, especially if you're taking a listing. And you're going to say, here's a safe way to do it. You're not going to get beat up on your commission if you have a better plan. And there's always a better plan. Um, so I would challenge a lot of you, don't sit on your laurels. Figure out how to get ahead when the picture looks different. And when the world, you know, when the world opens back up in a new way. So imperfect action, guys, go create content and don't be afraid to hit the leak. All right. Perfect. Well, I, again, I really appreciate your time. Um, and I love chatting about video. So I'm, I'm glad you were able to join me today. Yeah, I, I could just go on for days. <laughs> so thank, you, thank you for having me, Katie. I, I All right, really man. appreciate it. Cool. Well, I appreciate it. Have a good day. See ya.